Why do you go to church is the topic that I've been provided. Number one, you don't go to church. It's impossible to go to the church that Jesus established. Reason why I say that is because people are misinformed, whether they are told lies, whether they honestly believe something that they heard once upon a time from their parents or someone. But it's always good to go back to God's Word and to find out what the word church actually means. I looked up how many people die every year. The world death clock is a dynamic clock that calculates the number of people who are dying in the world every second. On average, there are 56 million deaths that takes place in one year. That average is 1.8 per second. Now I think how many people die each day, each second, and the sad thing is that these deaths, the majority of them, are lost. They could have been religious. They could have been faithful, going to quote unquote church, but they were following man and they weren't following God's word. Sure, the preacher would get up there, and he would have the Bible, but would he be teaching the truth? And see, I would say, like 95% of the things you listen to online about religion is error because they will take some part of God's word and they will come up with all kinds of things with that. I once heard, and it's true, that rat poison is 98% food and 2% poison. So I wanna encourage you as listeners as people seeking the truth, to follow God's word. Let's look at Matthew, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse number five. But before we get there, I want to let you know that this is talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You see, they were religious leaders at that time, just like we have hundreds of religious leaders in this day and age. But you see, they were false teachers. And it said that in this text, you're going to find out that how that poison, how that leaven spread. Let's read. Now when his disciples had come to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said to them, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Now, what is leaven? That is something that you place, a substance that you place in bread, typically a, a yeast. And what does that do? It causes the dough to rise. So when you see bread in your home or bread in the store, it typically has yeast in it. And so Jesus has given this example. That's this is how the false teaching spreads. Even in Galatians, the fifth chapter in verse number nine, it talks about a little yeast works through the whole batch of dough, the whole batch of dough, just a little bit, just like that rat poison. So that's why it's important to realize that you do not go to church because when you hear God's word, you believe God's word, you repent in your heart, you confess his name, and you're baptized and have all your sins washed away like they did in the first sermon in Acts, the second chapter, the Lord added them to his church, the church that belonged to Christ. Many people will say, nope, I don't have to get baptized. Well, I, I'm encouraged to get baptized after I'm saved. No, 
That is the biggest false teaching that is going around. But let's continue to read verse number seven. And they reasoned among themselves saying, it is because we have taken no bread. These are the disciples. This is what they were reasoning. They felt because they hadn't taken along any bread. But Jesus being aware of it, he said to them, O oh, you of little faith, why do you reason among yourself because you have not brought bread? Do you not understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took up? How is it that you do not understand that I did not speak about you or speak to you concerning bread? but to be aware of the leaven of the scribes and the Pharisees, or the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven in the bread, but of the false doctrine, the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Now it continues. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea and Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I, the son of man am? Now, when you go looking for truth, do not look toward man. So they said, some say, Jesus, that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are Elijah. And others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. You see, people describe some very powerful people in the Bible. John the Baptist, a great man of God, Elijah, a great man of God, Jeremiah, an awesome man of God, or some of the other prophets. But Jesus just looked at him and he says, but who do you say that I am? Then Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I will say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, shall not prevail against it. Now, this is Jesus talking with his disciples. And Peter made that awesome confession. And we have a false religion that's based upon this that says that Peter was the first pope and he is the one who has the king keys to the kingdom of heaven. And these are the group of people that came up with December 25th being Christ's birthday. No, and where is nowhere in the scriptures. They wanted to have a mass for Christ. And so they put Christ, mass, and how many people follow that around the world? You see, that's why the majority of the world is lost. That's why 56 million people died, and we don't know how many of those were true believers or if they were following what it meant to be the church instead of to go to a church building because it is clear that the body of Christ, the church of Christ, and why do we call it the church of Christ? Because Jesus said, I will build my church. How many can you get out of mine? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. How many can you get out of it? 
You see, it, it's there. And I don't have to add anything. I don't have to take away anything. All I have to do is read God's word and be aware of the poison, be aware of the leaven and the false teachers. But I know that there are honest people that are seeking and that are listening and going to be blessed by God's word. Now, when you look at this, it continues to say, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he commanded his disciples, his disciples, that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. And you see, what are the keys to the kingdom of heaven? What did Peter do on the day of Pentecost? He opened the door for the first Christians. He preached that sermon and 3,000 souls were added. And you can see the method, the message and the method that was there. He preached, they were convicted in their heart. They asked, men and brethren, what should we do? He said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's it. I'm not going to add anything. I'm not going to take away anything. You read it for yourself. It is in your Bible. Now, there is only one mega church. See, a church that belongs to Christ is all over the world, all over the world. Those who have been baptized in the Christ, those who are living according to him. So you cannot go to church when you are the church. There's another passage of scripture that I would like to share with you. Matthew 15th chapter, then the disciples came to him and asked, do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? Yes, people are going to be offended, but you teach them and you tell them anyway. Isn't that what Jesus did? He was not concerned about them being offended. Because when you speak the truth and you're standing for Jesus and it was once said you need to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. What better thing to stand on than Jesus and his word? He replied, every plant that my heavenly father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them alone. They are blind guides. If the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a pit. Now imagine this is your life right here, right now. Who are you following? What teachings are you following? And see, some people feel that, oh, it's okay. You know, as long as we're trying. No, it's not okay. It is not okay because Jesus is clear. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So why, so why do you go to church? Maybe you're lost, if that's the mentality. Maybe you need to read God's word more and seek out the things that God says about his church. And look at the scriptures that I provided you. I didn't add, I didn't take away. I just merely use scriptures to back up scriptures. That's what we want to do. Rightly divide the word of God. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Thank you so very much for this opportunity to share your truth. And I know that there are people out there looking for truth. And we know that it's your truth that will set us free. We're thankful that we can be a part. You give us an opportunity to be a part of the church that Jesus established. That's what we want to be a part of. 
So it is never a building. It is a gathering of those who have heard your word, believed, repented, confessed, and then put Jesus on in baptism, and he added them to his church. Thank you very much. It's in Jesus' name and his name alone. Amen.